What is up everyone? My name is Ross and if you're new here and you want to learn more about Photoshop photography and other various forms of multimedia witchcraft, I highly suggest you hit the subscribe button today and turn on those gosh darn bell notifications so you don't miss a thing today. I'm really excited. I got an awesome thing I want to show you guys. I'm going to do a start to finish photo restoration for you guys and I'm going to show you my preferred methods and tips and tricks on how to breathe life into a very kind of water damaged photo in Photoshop. So let's jump in the Photoshop, shall we? Wow, that's a mouthful. Okay, so here's an image. I actually did this, um, I'm pretty active on some subreddits in Reddit. This one came from, I think, Old School Cool, or maybe it was uh, Restorations. Regardless, I did it like a year ago. The original owner of the image contacted me saying they wanted it, and it was in my Dropbox, which I cleaned up. So I get to do this restoration again. So we're going to do it together. So the first thing I'm going to do just by habit is I'm going to hit Command J to duplicate this layer. This, once again, is just so we work non-destructively uh, going forward. But the first thing that I'm going to do, and this is my number one tip and trick for any photo restoration, especially if you're working with something that doesn't have color like this, is we're going to add a new black and white adjustment layer. The reason why I like the black and white adjustment layer is because it gives us these color sliders where we can push and pull the luminosity of the image. And this is going to be great for getting rid of some of this um, damage and cleaning it up pretty quickly. So all I'm going to do is just play with these sliders. You can see is if, if I pull the reds in, it's like magic. It cleans this up pretty quickly. And same with the yellows. Now, we're going to lose a little bit of detail, but if we turn this on and off, you can see there's not a lot of detail in there to begin with. Basically, we're just going to try to get this to a state where we can recognize the faces and get rid of that damage uh, as much as we can. So we're going to just play with the, I think, the red and yellow sliders here because there's not much, there's no other uh, color in this image, really. So we're going to bump this up, maybe not so far, maybe about right there and there. And now, because it's so washed out, we're going to want to bring back some of that contrast. So what I would do is uh, let's just add a brightness and contrast um, adjustment layer and see where this goes. If I pull, wow, yeah, if I just pull back the brightness, let's use Legacy and see what this does. Pull back the con ugh, brightness, bump up the contrast. Uh, let's see. Contrast. Yeah, maybe not using Legacy is the best bet. But I'm going to just play with this. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. We've got a pretty good starting point just with two adjustment layers just that quickly so we the, let's just let's just recap before we move on so first we just added a black and white adjustment layer to just kind of push and pull the reds and yellows to kind of clean up that uh, that garbage if you will and get it to a very kind of washed out state but then we brought back some detail with the brightness and contrast now you could probably do this with curves too but I, you know I like to use the sliders I'm a slider guy so that's why I used uh, brightness and contrast and as always with things in Photoshop there's no one right way to do that heck that's why I'm here there's probably t plenty of tutorials out there to show you the same thing but I'm gonna show you a little bit different so let's continue on with our edit here from here I mean I think this is looking pretty good uh, I think where I would go from here is I'd stamp a new visible layer. Actually, maybe we don't even need to do that. Maybe we can just work on the layer that we got here. So what I would do is probably just start with the patch tool and see if I could patch some of this stuff. That's working pretty good. Um, maybe, actually, let's do, let's do clone. Because I want to basically clean this up. Why is this not? What is this doing? because my flow is down oh come on Ross you have a selection down here don't do what I just did I was trying to clone and it wasn't doing anything and you could see I had a selection well if you have a selection it's not gonna work Ross so command D to deselect anything that you have selected and then we just kind of clean this up I'm gonna probably speed up this process so you don't have to sit and watch me um, but we will come back when this is all jazzy Alrighty, so I'm back here now, and uh, pretty much all I did, like this photo, was very damaged, as you can see. What what I did, is what I worked on, is a lot of clone stamp, a lot of uh, patch tool. I even just painted with white sometimes. But I'm going to show you another a few tips and tricks um, on how I was going about this. This was a pretty high contrast photo now, at where we got it to. Um, but with the clone stamp, here's two 
tips that I want you to walk away th with today. My mode, I was switching, well, I mainly use darken, but you can use darken and lighten. And notice my opacity is set at like 58% and my flow is set at 43. That's so I can kind of build up over time. And when it sets a darken, I know I'm not going to pick up any highlights um, like when I was doing the hair up here. I'll just show you. So if I have my clone stamp set to darken, opacity 58% and flow 43, I can just kind of click on any of these dark areas, um, make sure I'm on the right layer, and just start kind of picking up that texture um, and just start layering it and, and vice versa on the skin tones I can go to lighten because I wasn't liking what I was uh, getting here um, but I can just slowly kind of lighten these areas up and it's gonna pick up that texture that's already in the image or photo um, but it's gonna kind of layer it up very slowly so you're not hitting everything uh, at full tilt right away but um, this is I've worked on this for about 20 minutes uh, yeah about 20 minutes we're at and um, I'm, I'm liking where it's at now once again this is a very uh, <laughs> heavily damaged photo uh, if I wasn't doing a video on it I'd probably take some more time and uh, finesse it a little bit but I just want to show you this is what we started with you can't really see much detail there but after adding those first two adjustment layers of black and white and brightness and contrast uh, and then just kind of fiddling with some cloning and uh, patching we get to this which I think is a pretty pretty stellar result for like I said 20 minutes of work I hope you learned something those are just some tips and tricks on how I tackle some photo restorations that have some heavy damage once again the main takeaway is if it is black and white or uh, sepia tone just convert that bad boy to black and white because you can use those sliders to push and pull um, those tones to really get rid of a lot of that uh, um, a damage from the get-go and from there you know just uh it's a la carte do what you need to do brightness and contrast curves a lot of brushing and patch tool and clone stamp once again my name is ross i hope you learned something and i will see you guys next time